where does someone start? Uh, you obviously recognize that there was a, we, no one gets better unless they recognize they have a problem, but where do you start? Obviously there's a stigma, there's an embarrassment. You didn't want to tell your friends, your superiors, your family. And, and once you get over that, where do you start? Yeah. So it's really, you have to start with financial literacy. A lot of people just assume that 401k is just a scam because you heard it from someone or uh, you, you think that budgeting is just a waste of time and inflation is causing all the problems because that's all you read on the news. All you watch on the news is inflation this, inflation that. But when you look at your own budget, that's where you have to start is look within yourself. So what are you truly spending on, right? So when, when I talk to my clients and, and my clients show me their, uh, their budgeting, the first thing I ask them is, where do you think you are with your finances right now? They're like, well, it's not so great and I could probably do better. And then when I look at their finances and they say, well, did you know that you were spending like 1500 bucks a month on uh, entertainment, restaurants, liquor, and all that stuff? And they're like, well, we had no idea. Okay. So this is where you need to start tracking what you're truly spending on because you're trying to figure out how much you want to save and invest. But when you're spending this much money on discretionary items and then you have no room to save and no room to pay down your student loan debt or anything else, um, that's where the problem really is. But the other root cause, I think the root cause of the real issue is your behavior. So when it comes to behavioral spending, it does take a while for you to adjust to it. I didn't go from, you know, one day to the next and say, all right, I'm going to stop spending all, all my money. Right. So it took me a while to get used to that, not just being frugal, but being intent, like just intentional spending. What am I spending this money for? I'm intentionally spending this money for longevity budgeting and i i did watch your 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 first video on your your youtube channel is actually all about oh. budgets and how you sit down every year and put together a budget and people like you said people don't realize what they spend money on until they really sit down and say okay you know what whoa i went out to dinner eight times this month i spent yeah. you know 150 dollars each time I can do that only four times and save a bunch of money, right? It's, 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 it's discipline. And when you sit down with people, is that one of the first things you talk to them about? Yeah, definitely. It's all about behavioral spending at the beginning because they want to figure out which, you know, uh, am I doing this right with the investment return? What if I get 7%? But I look at your budget and I'm like, well, you're, you're spending a lot of money on this. This is why you're not increasing your savings rate. So when it comes to financial independence, it's not about, what investment product, I mean, that, that's a part of it too. Like which investment product will give you maybe the best return, the steady return, but your savings rate always trumps your investment return and what, you know, how to get to the high savings rate will need to start with budgeting and budgeting is difficult. It's not an easy thing to do. And I, over the years, I have been trying to perfect this budgeting product and it's a, it, it's really a simple spreadsheet and just kind of keeping track of your expenses and it even tracks all the inflation uh, increases year over year. And, you know, I'm not going to say that everything is on uh, behavioral spending. I mean, inflation has been a problem for a while uh, since 2020. And I, I know the Fed even says that, hey, uh, inflation has been easing. But when you look at some of the research, uh, you know, so, so like, uh, what, what was it? A lot of the staple items, the essential items have gone up a lot. So it, it has been a problem for the last four years. So when people say, well, I can't really afford this anymore, that's it's a true story. And I think, you know, um, uh, this is just my personal opinion, but, you know, Wall, Wall Street is, you know, they're doing investments, but they, they haven't really kind of, I think they met what's going on with Main Street is what I'm saying is. You know, that's what's really going on with the, the people who are trying to survive and people who are trying to do things right, but their income is just not uh, not where they should be. And then the inflation keeps going up. I mean, CPI says 3%, but if you look at some of the items, they, they have been like um, 40% over the last four years, like frozen juices, 49.7%. And that's a 12% annual increase, you know, if you look at it. And the motor vehicle uh, was like 47% over the last four years. And that was, that's like 12% annually and vehicle insurance is also up. That's over 40, it's like 47% over the last four years. My car insurance premium went up by 26% in just one year. And that's something that, that I do talk to my clients and I do address in my videos on my channel is that inflation is a real thing. I mean, this, this has been a difficult time.
but you have to learn to adjust based on what you currently have because what comes down to it it is a math a, a math problem it's you know if you say well i don't want to give up something well you're you're going to go into deficit right so that's that's really the big big thing are there accounts that you recommend people open or is it by circumstance do you look at each each individual separately say well this would be the best vehicle for you and there's a different vehicle for you uh sure yeah so it depends on the each individual like some people can be well, mo most americans are employed by somebody w2 employees and if you're a self-employed individual there are many tools for that too but uh you know in, in most case scenario uh, you have your 401k the first thing i would look at is if your 401k comes with a match don't leave free money on the table. The only exception is if you can't feed yourself, and if you have a hard time budgeting, and if you're in a deficit with your budget, then stop the 401k uh, matching until you can figure out what's going on with your own budget. Now, after that, then I would op always recommend opening up a Roth IRA because Roth IRA is going to be your tax-free distribution. So your tax-free income going into your retirement. Roth IRA can reduce your tax liability. So if you you know, let's say you have a million dollars in your 401k, you have a million in your Roth IRA, and maybe uh, you don't want to withdraw too much out of your 401k so that you can use some of the money from uh, from your Roth IRA to reduce your tax liability. So that's really, really important to have that Roth uh, 401k and IRA two completely separate investment accounts. And that's probably one of the most common misconceptions is that 401k and IRA are the same things when they're not. And then when you're done with all of those, then you can move on to opening up a, a taxable brokerage account that is going to be in after-tax contribution. So that's something that I would definitely look into. And the other uh, uh, investment vehicle that a lot of uh, fire people love is the HSA, or uh, it's the health savings account. And what people, um, it, you can contribute in pre-tax dollars. And it can reduce your federal income tax, state income tax, except for California and New Jersey. <laughs> um, and uh, you can um, contribute before Medicare and Social Security tax, too. So that's it can reduce your pre-tax. It grows tax-free. And then when you're 65, you can actually take that money out and use it for anything. The only tax you owe is your federal and state income taxes. And But if you use it before 65 for any non-qualified medical expenses, then you will owe a 20% penalty. So to keep that in mind, and the last trick that you'll have with the HSA is that you could save your receipts. So if I spent 200 bucks today on my contact lenses that was supposed to come out of my HSA and I use my cash instead, I save my receipt for it. And then five years down the road, and I want to reimburse myself that 200 bucks that I already spent on, I can just go to HSA and get that 200 bucks back and just spend it on something else. So that's another uh, trick that a lot of people don't know. So. so the retire early part is some, say someone wants to retire in their 40s or 50s, but some of these vehicles, you have to wait until you're 55 or 59 and a half to actually get money out without a big tax penalty. So how does that mm -hmm. work? Yeah, so uh, it would be the taxable brokerage account is where you need to probably focus on. Um, but I don't encourage people to just skip out on the 401k or Roth IRA just because of that. Um, if you're looking to retire in your 40s, um, your savings rate needs to be really high. So if you're just saving 25% of your income, you're not going to be able to retire by um, 40 uh, if your income is less than, uh, let's say, $200,000, $300,000 a year. But if your income is outrageously high, which is very, it's not as common, then sure, 25% could work. But realistically speaking, you will have to save and invest probably above 50% of your income to get to that. So I always encourage people at least get that employer match because that's free money from 401k and get the uh, the Roth IRA because that is going to be the tax-free growth going into your 60s and 70s. I, and I treat that as kind of a an insurance plan going into my 60s and 70s because if I fail to retire early in my 40s, I still didn't miss out on my contributions on my 401k and Roth IRA that grows tax-deferred or tax-free. So I would still focus on those as a long-term plan, but in the short term, let's say you want to retire within the next 10 years in your 40s, then you can say, I'm going to put more into my taxable brokerage account and I have my calculator on my website and say, this is how much money you need to save each month and every year 
assuming that your rate of return is seven or eight percent, then you're going to get this fire number and retire potentially retire early. And then you do the inflation adjustment too. So um, it's doable, but I still don't encourage you to miss out on the retirement contribution.